Hello everyone, welcome to our next video and today we are going to start a new chapter that is chapter 14 which is sources of energy general science class 10. So, the first question that comes to mind when we listen to sources of energy is which sources of energy would you consider as good sources of energy? Means you can get many sources but which one will be good for it? I mean it will be a good source of energy or it will be a profitable source of energy. And the answer to that is there are a few to points actually to ponder about on what would be a good source. The first thing that we need is availability. The whatever be the energy source, the availability should be high. If the availability is very low, then you can't consider it a good source of energy because it will get used up and it will end very soon. Then the second thing is accessibility. Whether it is getting to you means are you getting it? What it's if, if it is not accessible like if it is only for uh, found at a particular place in a very remote area and it is not accessible to you to use it then you can't consider it as a good source of energy the next point that comes into play is the transportability whether it can be transported to different places or not otherwise the same problem will happen the accessibility will become low because it can't be transported to different places then we need to see whether it is affordable or not. The economically it should be affordable. If the price is very high, then the general public will not be able to use it and hence there will be no use of this uh, source of energy. And the most important thing is how much energy are you getting on burning or on utilizing a certain amount of that uh, source of energy. Means what is the calorific value? High calorific value, if any source of energy has high caloric value, that means the source of energy is good. By what do you mean by caloric value? It means if you burn 1 gram of a certain source of energy and the ener then the energy produced from burning or from utilizing that source of energy is called the calorific value. So higher the energy you produce by burning only 1 gram of any substance, the better the fuel it is or the better the source of energy it is. So if the calorific value is high, that means this fuel is a good source of fuel or the energy is a good source of energy. So these are some of the points which actually tell us whether a source of energy is good or it is not that good or it is bad. So now let's move on to the conventional sources of energy that we use generally. The first one is the most popular one that is the fossil fuels. And what do you mean by fossil fuels? These are the fuels which we use in our everyday life like petrol, kerosene, diesel. These are all fossil fuels. The fossil fuels are why do we call them fossil fuels? Fossil fuels because it means why does the term fossil come? Because the production of fossil fuel or how fossil fuel is created is somewhat similar to the process by which fossils are created. The fossils are created over hundreds and thousands of years. It takes that long of amount of time to create a fossil. In the same way a fossil fuel to be created also or to be formed or to be produced also takes that much amount of time it takes thousands of years to form a fossil fuel now the process is also pretty much same how how can you form a fossil fuel to form a fossil fuel you will need a, a raw material which which is a high source of carbon in it because carbon will help us uh, form a good source a good source of fuel now where do you get this carbon you get this carbon from plants because plants have high amount of carbon in their structure. So whenever a plant dies and it falls into the ground or it falls into the soil and layers of soil keep on submerging it under the and keeps on deepening under the crust, what happens is the, the same process is followed by formation of fossil, the exact same process of under high pressure and under the condition of anaerobic respiration because you won't find air under the soil, these things decompose and they and that gives rise to the formation of fossil fuels. So that is how fossil fuels are created and that's why the name fossil fuel because it matches with this formation of fossils. Now, what are the merits or demerits? Now, merits is that these are highly accessible, but the most uh, and also affordable, also transportable. So these things are the merits. But what are the demerits of fossil fuels? The demerits of fossil fuels are the most important demerit is that it is a non-renewable resource. So you have to use it in a very constricted way. Although we are not doing that, we are using it in a very uh, we are using it lavishly, like it will always be there it will not it will end after a certain period of time and then you will not be able to produce this because the amount of time it takes to produce a certain amount of fossil fuel is thousands of years now you can't wait for thousands of years to get another liter of fossil fuel like another liter of petrol or another liter of kerosene or diesel so what we are doing is we are using it lavishly but 
the fact is it is a non renewable resource so if as it is a non renewable resource we need to use it in a restricted manner so that we can sustain it for a longer period of time now the thing is another demerit that we get from fossil fuels is the air pollution that it causes now when you burn a fossil fuel a lot and lots of gases are formed and these are also greenhouse gases some of them are greenhouse gases some of them cause air pollution and because of the burning of this fossil fuel some oxides are formed acidic oxides are formed and these acidic oxides lead to the formation of acid rain as well which will damage the soil the water the habitat of any sort of uh, organism that lives in that area so there are demerits like pollution there are demerits like being the non renewable resource and these demerits are although they are present but still we are utilizing it so how can we get out of this or how can we get uh, away from being so or using something that is so pollute that is polluting the environment so how do we do that and for that we have uh, alternative sources of energy and we will get to that so now uh, it's not that only fossil fuel is used for heating up uh, or, or for burning only uh, fossil fuel is also used indirectly to form electrical energy which you can convert fossil fuel the heat energy from fossil fuel into electrical energy and that is also related to our a uh, thermal power plant which is our next topic so let's connect both so what you can do is if you take fossil fuels burn them to produce heat you can convert water into steam and this steam that you can produce this steam energy will be used can be used to run a turbine a turbine is something like you can say it uh, as a fan uh, like it has blades in it so if you use the steam energy or you can blow the steam on the turbine like in this direction if you blow the steam the turbine will rotate the turbine is connected to something called a dynamo now what is a dynamo dynamo is something that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy just like a generator so this motion this mechanical energy of the turbine will be converted to electrical energy by the dynamo and then you can use it to light a bulb if you want okay so that's how we can convert our fossil energy from fossil fuel that is the heat energy into electrical energy and that is exactly what is done in the thermal power plants and that's why you will see the thermal power plants most of the thermal power plants are actually set up near coal mines or oil mines because it is easier for them to collect the fossil fuel and convert it to electricity and another reason is why do we convert fossil fuel energy means energy obtained from fossil fuel into electricity because it is much affordable and it is much efficient to transport or to uh, to convert that energy into electric energy and then uh, transport it to different parts rather than actually carrying fossil fuel from one place to another it is more efficient to transport electricity from one place to the other so that's why they set up the thermal power plants near the oil fields or coal mines and from there they collect the uh, fossil fuels they heat them up and using the steam energy they will convert the mechanical energy or the means how, what what are we actually doing here we are using a uh, heat energy we are converting it into mechanical energy and then we are ultimately receiving electrical energy so we are uh, going through the changes of energy and ultimately creating electrical energy which can be transported easily and it will be much efficient much more efficient than transporting the fossil fuel from one place to the other so that's all about thermal power plant and fossil fuels now let's move on to the next point and that is our hydro power plants hydro power plants means to use water to create electricity and the process is same so how what is done in hydro power plants is that you will have reservoirs of water so like high reservoirs of water and then underground means these are also termed as dams we create dams in rivers which act as reservoirs of water so you will have water here and under the dam you will have a turbine okay so what happens is when you let the water seep in this energy of water will actually rotate the turbine as the turbine rotates you will obviously have a dynamo connected to it this dynamo will convert this mechanical energy into electrical energy so what we are actually doing is we are using the flow of water what source of energy potential energy and kinetic energy because of the height of the water being above the dam or being above the turbine it will have a potential energy which will be converted into kinetic energy when the turbine rotates and this kinetic energy will be converted into electrical energy by the dynamo so here also we are using water to create 
electricity because electricity is easier to transfer from one place to the other. Now, there are some demerits of constructing a dam. Obviously, there are merits that we are not worried about the non-renewable source of energy because you can store water whenever it rains. So, it is a renewable source of energy. You can store water anytime you want whenever it rains. Now, there is no problem in that. We are not going to get uh, less amount of water. We are always going to have sufficient amount of water for, through rainfall. The problem is when you create a dam, it actually leads to loss of habitat of many species around that region. Means you will submerge the ecosystem because you are stopping the flow of water of a river. The water spreads and it submerges the surrounding area. And on submerging the surrounding area, the plants will die, the animals will die, many species will lose their habitat where they live and as a result the ecosystem is disturbed. So that is not a good thing for any uh, habitat or for any source of or sort of ecosystem. It is not good to actually clean out a whole ecosystem just because of uh, creating electricity what we are actually doing. But that is the price we have to pay in order to create hydroelectricity. Although it is not good for long term benefits, we are not going to have long term benefits because we are disturbing the environment, but that is what we do and that is how we uh, create electricity and look at our own profit. So, okay, let us not move into that topic right now. So, what we are doing is the demerits is that on constructing a dam, you will lose ecosystem around it and that is the reason why there are many cases where dams for or creation of dams have been restricted because looking into the aspects of not destroying nature. So, dams can give you good amount of electric energy and that is the most uh, common source of electric energy production that we have in most of the places. It, they use hydroelectricity to create electricity. The electricity that you get at homes in most of the parts of the world is actually hydroelectricity by creation of dams. Now, let us move on to the next topic and this is the biomass. Now, biomass means we are using biological matter and creating energy out of that. So, what are we doing here? Uh, the fact that you, the, the actual process, let me explain it to you. Uh, the first of all, you will need some waste products. Waste means animal waste or plant waste. Like you can say cow dung or any other waste like that. You, can, you take those waste, you prepare a slurry, means you, come, you mix it with water and you prepare a slurry. That slurry will be containing all the animal and plant wastes. Then we will be using that to fill up the digester. Digester means it is a, a sort of apparatus, big apparatus. This will be a digester. So, what you do here is you put in the slurry here. You pour the slurry, the slurry is then accumul accumulated here inside the digest. This is called the digester because here actually it is, it is going to be digested. By whom? We will put in some microorganisms here. Okay. Now, this is an airtight container. We have slurry here, we have microbes here and it is an airtight container and since it is an airtight container, there will be no oxygen. So, the microorganisms will be performing anaerobic respiration here, anaerobic respiration. That is the respiration in the absence of oxygen and it takes 3 to 4 days to complete the respiration process and during the respiration process what they will be generating from here is some gases like carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, hydrogen gas and the most important methane gas CH4. Out of all the gases that are produced, methane actually forms 75 percent of the gases and methane is a good source of energy. You can burn methane, it is a very efficient source of energy. So, what we do here, we have a gas outlet here and we will, this is the gas outlet. So, if you open the tap, you are going to collect the gas from here into whatever container you want and then you are going to actually separate it. That is a separate process for separation of, because you, you cannot collect gas like methane will come out first, then oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide will come out. No, they come in, they come out together. So, you collect the gases and then you go for separation of gases and you collect methane separately, carbon dioxide separately, hydrogen separately, hydrogen sulphide separately and so on. So, th these are some of the gases that are produced and methane is the most important one because it produces 75 percent of uh, of the all of, of the whole amount of gas that is produced. Now, what you might think that what happens to the remaining amount of slurry that is present out here? The residue that is left can be used as fertilizers or manures for plants. So, ultimately what is happening is whatever we are using, we are using waste products 
to form a source of energy and the remaining waste that the, the residual part is also used for plants themselves. So we are not wasting anything rather we are using up waste to create something beneficial. So which is a very good thing. So that is how biomass is used to form energy and this uh, things are also called biogas formation. These gases are called biogas formation because we are using life forms and, and uh, animal wastes to form these gases. So that is how the process works and uh, now let us move on to our next topic which is the wind energy. So how do we use wind energy? Wind energy is generally harnessed with the help of windmills. So you have seen wind, windmills in many places, they set up huge windmills and what happens the exactly the same thing when wind blows the windmill will rotate, the turbine will rotate. When the turbine rotates, there is a dynamo behind the same technique, dynamo is behind. The dynamo will convert this wind energy, this uh, mechanical energy into the electric energy. So a good amount of electricity is produced. But of course, there is a good amount of electricity produced. It is a non-renewable source of energy. Everything is fine. But <coughs> there, excuse me. But there are a few demerits. Now, what are the demerits? The demerits are that for a windmill to produce energy, the minimum speed of wind must be 15 kilometers per hour. The general wind that blows on a day to day basis in our area, like in Silchar for example, is 1.9 to 2.5 kilometer or 1.5 to 2.5 kilometer per hour. That is the normal speed of air. But for a windmill to work, you need 15 kilometer per hour of wind to blow to create or for the windmill to be able to form some sort of energy electric energy. So that is a very big criteria because you won't get that speed of wind all throughout the year in any place of the world. So there is always a season where you will get wind and that's when you generate the electricity, use the electric energy and the remaining part of the year you can't really produce a good amount of energy because though there is no such amount of or there is the wind is not blowing at that speed throughout the year. So this is one of the biggest demerits. The next thing is you need a huge plot of land at least uh, 2 hectares of land to produce 1 megawatt of electricity. 1 megawatt of electricity can actually uh, sustain uh, around 600 families. So you can think of one village or one town, small town can be sustained by uh, a 2 hectare land of windmill uh, energy production. So that's that's how much current it produces. So you need a huge amount of area plot of land to for, to set up a windmill, uh, what can I say, uh, to, to, to have a windmill set up in an area. Now another demerit is that since the windmills are exposed to the nature 24-7, 365 days in a year, it goes, it suffers or it faces various weathers like wind, storm, hail, everything it faces. As a result, wear and tear occurs in many parts of the windmill. So we have to go for maintenance over and over again every single year and the maintenance cost is also very high. So actually it is a very expensive process and that is why uh, not in, in not many places we will see windmill setups uh, available. So that is about wind energy, how we harness wind energy, convert it to electrical energy. Uh, we have seen the benefits and also the demerits. Now let's move on to our next topic which is the alternative source of energy and we have only one topic here that is the solar energy. So solar energy means the energy we obtain from the sun. So how can we use this solar energy? So the first thing that is a very uh, conventional way of using solar energy and that is by through solar cookers. In many villages people actually use solar cookers to cook food. Now how do they do this? You take a box. Okay, painted black. The box will be painted black, completely painted black on the inside. Put a glass slab on top of it. A glass slab will be placed on top of it, and you will have a mirror here. Okay, a mirror. This will be a mirror, and this will be a glass slab on top. So you have a box, you place a glass slab on top of it, and you have a mirror on the side. It's like opening a shoe box and the hat of the shoe box, the cap of the shoe box will be having a mirror. The top of the box will be having a glass and the whole thing inside will be painted black. And you put it outside on the sunshine. So what happens? The sun rays will come in and they will enter into the box. Now as the inside of the box is painted black, it will absorb most of the light because black, black surface has absorbed all the amount of light that it gets. So it will absorb all the light and since we are and as it is absorbing all the light, it will also absorb maximum heat. And since we are covering it with a glass slab, 
or a glass uh, panel the heat will not be able to come out it's just like the greenhouse effect okay and you can, have you seen the greenhouses which are made up of glass so that plants can be grown inside that is to trap the heat inside so here also glass is used to trap the heat inside the light will come out but the glass will trap the heat inside the box and the heat is generated to such a level when you place it for some time you can actually use you can actually put rice inside and you can cook rice or you can cook some other any dish you want to cook you can cook it inside this uh, solar cooker this is called a solar cooker so you are using solar energy to cook food which is a very uh, conventional method it is not like something very new it is a very conventional method people use it in villages we don't use it in town that much but people use it in villages so that's how it, that is one way by which you can uh, harness solar energy the most modern way is to form solar cells or solar panels which we know in general now solar cells are used to harness the solar energy and convert it to electrical energy okay so we are harnessing solar energy convert it to converting it to electrical energy but the problem is the amount of electricity produced by a single solar cell is very less so it produces around a voltage of 0.5 to 1 volt of electricity in a, by a single cell and the amount of power produced is 0.7 watt of electricity so 0.7 watt power is like uh, even if you see those uh, dim lights that we use small bulbs that we use in our home they are also around 5 watt or 6 watt so even uh, one single cell cannot actually run a single bulb so for running or for glow, blow, glowing a single 5 watt bulb we will need, need uh, many such uh, maybe around 7 such solar cells to create a solar battery and that can actually blow a single bulb uh, 5 watt bulb so the, this is the demerit that the amount of energy produced by a single solar cell is very less the benefit is that solar cells are made up of silicon and silicon is highly available in our nature so the raw material used to form solar uh, solar panels is not uh, unavailable or it, there is no lack of that its availability is high so we can get a huge amount of silicon we can form it but what makes solar cells expensive is the wiring the wire that is used in solar cells is actually made up of silver to make the conduction process of electricity very smooth because silver is a very good conductor of electricity so that's why silver wires are used and silver wiring in the solar panel makes the solar panel very expensive so when you have a huge big solar panel you can actually create a good amount of electricity but the cost of that big solar panel is also very high so it is a very exp so it is a very expensive thing and you don't actually see it in a very it is not a household uh, uh, setup to have it is used in many institutions or you can see it in space stations tv stations radio stations in those uh, areas where these are institutions those places you can see these solar panels being used because of the expensive nature of this uh, setup so for example one of one, one such example is a space station so when they send rockets or they send satellites into space you can you, the best source of energy is actually solar energy because you are going to get sunlight from the, there if, even if you don't get any source of energy you are going to get sunlight so if you use solar panels you can use solar panels to absorb the solar energy or to harness the solar energy and convert it to any source of energy you want so that's why these are very beneficial of course solar panels or solar cells are very beneficial just the problem is that the amount of electricity produced is not that high that we can get from the other sources of energy so obviously we are in the developing stage and we will be uh, able to form uh, more efficient sources of energy so i hope you understood whatever we discussed here today uh, many sources of energy we discussed very simple chapter and we don't have anything else after this in 2021 hslc syllabus because of the reduction in syllabus so i hope you understood everything if you have any question make sure you ask me in the comment section i'll be there to help you out so thank you everyone for watching and until next time cheers